Okay, so welcome to this video on the playlist of dermatological cases. Today I want to talk to you about some cases of hair disorders. I'm Dr. Nabe Truye, he board certified dermatologist. He will ask you some questions in the form of cases and then I'll answer them. The images are extracted from some books, websites and examination. Ask examination. Let's jump into cases. Question 1. Which one is Huxley liar? This photo here presents a schematic view of hair structure. I don't want to name the liars here as you can refer to box. What is important here is to pay attention to some clues. What is the innermost layer here? Medulla. And what is the relative sick layer here? This is cortex. And here, near to cortex, this thin layer is cuticle hair shaft. And then between the distance between cortex and external surface of this hair, we have cuticle hair shaft, IRS and ORS, inner root sheet and outer root sheet. Actually, IRS is composed of cuticle as free here, Huxley and Henle. And as you see here, Huxley layer is located more internally than handlet layer that is more externally. So the correct answer is 5. The 5 is Huxley layer. Question 2. Which one is attributed to isthmus? Classically, the terminal onogen hair is composed of upper 1 and 2 and lower 3 and 4 segments. Up to down here we have ostium. The distance between the ostium and insertion of sebaceous gland is called infundibulum. And the distance between the insertion of sebaceous gland and erector muscle is called isthmus. So the correct answer is isthmus. The bulb is here the part that is located in the subcutaneous fat. The distance between ball and isthmus as free is called a stem. So from ostium to down we have infundibulum, isthmus, a stem and ball. And another key point is the Adamson's fringe that is the border between the subcutaneous fat and dermal part of hair follicle that is named Adamson's fringe. Adamson's fringe here between 3 and 4. Adamson's fringe. Question 3. Legion of scalp since birth named the sign. This figure displays a ring of coarse hair surrounding a scalp lesion, commonly a nodule that means hair color sign. Another clue in this question is seen sparse, that means this condition is probably congenital. Hair color sign seen into conditions as a marker for ectopic neural tissue and aplasia cutis. In fact, membrane is aplasia cutis. Question 4. Here there is still another question to be considered. Lesion of scalp sin spares was the next intervention in better evaluation of this case. As a rule, CT is the most accurate method of detecting scalp defects, so the correct answer is CT scan. However, if a bony defect is detected by CT, then a follow-up evaluation by MRI may be indicated to better evaluation and detection of soft tissue problems, soft tissue extensions. Before jumping into the next question, I want to raise this question in another form as KFP, Key Feature Problems. In this form of question, a clinical problem in a selected age group and situation is proposed as a case scenario. Obviously, problems and subjects that are summarized in algorithms and tables or subjects that are at emergency situation are good subjects for this type of question. Now let's see the previous question in the form of KFP. 
a 40 year old boy referred to you with a nodule on the skull. This patient is normal, neurologically with no history of seizure. What's your leading diagnosis? Membranous aplasia cutis as the presence of hair color sign around a nodule. Question two. What take you in your immediate assessment and, and management? Sonography, MRI, CT scan, skull, X-ray, cerebral artery, angiography, CT angiography, no investigation needed at this point. As said before, for any nodule on skull, the first intervention is CT. So the correct answer is CT. Question three. If a CT bony defect has been detected, what take you in your immediate assessment and management? The correct answer is MRI. And four, if an MRI no skull defect has been detected, what take you in your immediate assessment and management? No investigation needed at this point. Question five, a 30 year old male who is referred to you with history of infertility was the diagnosis. Here we see broad skin on the skull that produces cerebriform folding of the skull. The folds are in anterior to posterior direction. An important clue in the figure is that hair density is reduced on the folds, but not in the furrow. The diagnosis is compatible with CVG, cutis verticis gyrata. Infertility in the history may be related to Klinefelter syndrome as the patient is male as a cause of CVG. Question seven, and here you see uh, another case of CVG, cutis verticis gyrata. What's the name of the disease? What you see here is cylindrical sheet and beading. Cylindrical sheet and beading of hairs and a yellow color that's compatible with trichomycosis. Trichomycosis, as you know, is a superficial coronabacterium infection, mostly affecting axillary armpits, but a skull and pubis could also be affected. Question seven. A five-year-old infant presents with silvery gray hair and hypopigmented skin, positive history of nystagmus and severe Neurological deficits, positive history of recurrent chest infection, what's the diagnosis? In a patient with silvery hair, the most common diagnoses come in mind are Chediak Higashi syndrome, Griselli, and Elijah syndrome. You may recall Hermansky Podlak, but that is not the case. Chediak Higashi, Griselli, and Elijah. In these syndromes, trichoscopy shows clumps of melanin. If the clumps of melanin are regularly spaced and small, Chediak Higashi is the diagnosis. When the clumps are larger and irregularly distributed, the Griselli syndrome is more probable. Elegyald is a variant of Griselli with severe neurological dysfunction. Other clues in question, so regular and small Chediak Higashi, irregular and large Griselli. If giant melanosomes are present, Chediak Higashi is more probable. Immune deficiency is also in favor of Chediak Higashi in more cases. In this case, severe neurological dysfunction contribute to the diagnosis of 
eligible. So the answer is eligible. Question 8. According to this trichogram, what is the more probable in this case? Photophobia, dermatitis, recurrent infection, neurological deficits. By looking at this figure, you can see clumps of melanin distributed irregularly and large. As indicated before, this is in favor of Griselli syndrome. So the correct answer is 4. Question 9. According to this trichogram, what is the diagnosis? This figure here presents adherent nodule along the hair shaft, which has surrounded it. This is equivalent to Pietra. In the next slide, a board question with the diagnosis of Pietra is presented. As you know, there are two types of Pietra, black and white. That white adhere to hair more loosely, so the board question is equivalent to white Pietra. White Pietra, white Pietra, black Pietra. Question 10. Hair changes in man with HIV infection. What's the diagnosis? This figure shows white nodule along the hair. As indicated before, is equivalent to white Pietra. The history demonstrates one clue compatible with white Pietra HIV infection. But there is still another question to be answered. How to differ Pietra from pe uh, pediculosis? As a rule, nodule of white piedra attached to the upper part of hair, and in pediculosis, uh, the attachment is to the lower part of hair. In the next slide, you see white piedra with loose attachment to the hair. It is important to notice that the color of white piedra is not always white. Question 11. What is the diagnosis? This figure displays a scale attached to the hair, compatible with hair cast. In the next slide, Pietra uh, compared the Pietra is hair cast. Hair casts are commonly elongated tubular structure encircling the hair shaft. Question 12. What is the causative agent for this figure? What is evident from this figure is tight attachment of nodules aligned hair shaft, that is equivalent to black pietra. The causative agent for black pietra is pietra horta. So the correct answer is pietra horta. Question 13. What is the diagnosis? What is evident from this photo is the figure of bamboo hair or the figure of ball and socket. That means in a susception of distal shaft into proximal shaft that is equivalent to trichorexis in vaginata. In this slide, the figure of bamboo hair is clearly evident in the board question, as you see. The board question of Trichorexis in vaginata. Question 14. Cutaneous lesions since birth in association with sparse hairs. What's the diagnosis? The photo shows two things. Trichorexis in vaginata 
and some cutaneous lesions. As I'm sure you know that the more associations with trichorexis in vaginata is ILC, ichthyosis linearis circumflexa. The diagnosis here is Netherton syndrome. Question 15. This is a board question. What's your diagnosis? This simply is trichorexis nodosa. Trichorexis nodosa. As you see here, this is like the ends of two brushes pushed into one another. Trichorexis nodosa. Question 16. According to this trichogram, what is the diagnosis? This is also another example of trichorexis nodosa. In the next slide, there are other cases of board questions on trichorexis nodosa. Question 17. Which one is more probable in traction alopecia? Figure 1 is indicative of white pietra. Figure 2 is indicative of trichomycosis. Figure 3, in figure 3, you see trichorexis nodosa, and in 4, you see the cast. Among them, as you know, cast could be seen in the traction alopecia, so the correct answer is 4. Cast in traction alopecia. Question 18. A 25-year-old male presents with normal hair at birth that subsequently followed by fragile hairs that need no cutting. What's the diagnosis? It was a board question. The trichoscopy figure here shows a view indicative of neck lace, that is, equivalent to monolatrix. The history demonstrates two things. Hairs were normal at birth and short, brittle, fragile hair after some months of birth. So the correct answer is monolatrix. Compare this shape to the necklace. And in this question, you notice that in monolatrix, the hairs beyond the skull can also be involved. There are some board questions on monolatrix. Another key point is that presence of follicular hyperkeratosis that is a common finding in monolatrix. Question 19. Which genetic mutation is more predictable in this case? Monolatrix is mainly inherited in the autosomal dominant fashion that is related to mutation in creatine 81, 83, and 86. 81, 83, and 86. However, in patients with autosomal recessive form, mutation in desmogelin 4 is more probable. So the correct answer is desmogelin. Question 20. A 22-year-old man presents with brittle fragile hairs, other findings, hypogonadism, and hearing loss. According to, to, uh, to this trichogram, which one is more probable? The trichoscopy figure here demonstrates a shaft twisting on its own axis that is equivalent to pletority. Pletority is classically associated with ectodermal abnormalities such as keratosis, pleuris, 
dental and nail dystrophies. Aggregate splitterity and hearing loss is the syndrome of Bjornstedt. Bjornstedt syndrome is splitterity and hearing loss. When hypogonadism is also present, the Crandell syndrome is proposed. Bjornstedt, pilitority and hearing loss, Crandell, Bjornstedt, and hypogonadism. Question 21. Which one is more probable? As you see here, the trichos copy presents necklace appearance compatible with monolatrics. Question 22. A four-year-old uh, boy with mental and psychomotor retardation and skeletal abnormalities. Evaluation for which genetic mutation is indicated? What you find here is hairs look like a steel wool. This finding alongside psychomotor and skeletal retardation are equivalent to Menkes syndrome that is caused by mutation in ATP7A. Pilitorti and trichorexis nodosa are the two most common abnormalities in Menkes syndrome. So the correct answer is ATP7A. Question 23. Brittle fragile hairs with alternating light and dark bands under polarizing light. That was a board question. This is a common question in examination. As you know, this is trichotiodystrophy that is characterized by sulfur deficient hair. In the next slide, there are some board questions on this hair abnormality. Trichotiodystrophy. Polarized light, polarizing light, dark bands, light and dark bands. Question 24. Hair shafts under polarized light, which one is more probable in this case? Trichotiodystrophy is associated with P beads, refers to P photophobia. I ichthyosis, B brittle hair, I IQ decreased, D decreased fertility, and S short stature. Other findings are tremor, ataxia, cataract, and dental and nail dystrophy. So the correct answer here is hearing loss. Hearing loss is not related to the associations of trichotiodystrophy. Question 25. What is the diagnosis? This figure shows bright and dark bands that dark bands are equivalent to the air filled cavities. The diagnosis here is pili angulati. Pili angulati. According to this trichoscopy, question 26, on non uh, polarized microscopy, which one is true? Pili angulati is a condition that we have not increased hair fragility. So the correct answer is free. Lengths of hairs are normal. This condition is a sporadic or occasionally autosomal dominant. And here, 27, a board question on Pili Anguleti. Note that under light microscopy, but in trichotiodystrophy, the history of question is related to polarized light microscopy, but the case of Pili Anguleti on history is related to under light microscopy.
Another clue in this uh, question is no history of hair fragility. Pili annuleti. What is the name of this hair shaft disorder? This is also another board question. Pili annuleti. Pili annuleti, unlike trichotidystrophy, uh, where banding only seen on polarizing microscopy is seen under light microscopy. Normal hair lengths. Question 29. Trichoscopy of a person with diffuse alopecia that hairs can be painlessly be pulled. What structural abnormality can be detected here? What we see here is a ruffled proximal cuticle. In history, it's interesting to notice that hairs can be easily and uh, painlessly pulled from the scalp. The diagnosis is loose anagen hair syndrome. In the next slide, you see the LAS, loose anagen syndrome, in both questions. The classic case is a young girl with fairly short blonde hair. Question 30. This was a bold question. The figure that you see here is equivalent to trichoptylosis. Trichoptylosis that is splitting of hair shaft giving it a feathery appearance. Trichoptylosis. Question 31. What is the diagnosis? The diagnosis here is Pilimultigemini. Pilimultigemini. Pilimultigemini is associated with hair shafts arising from one papilla. Pili multi gemini. Pili multi gemini. Question 32. What is the diagnosis? So the diagnosis here is simply trichostasis spinulosa, a follicular disorder characterized by retention of multiple vellus hair on a hyperkeratotic dilated hair follicle. This, con uh, this condition is commonly asymptomatic. In the next slide, a board question is present. A 30-year-old man, a case of kidney transplant with multiple skin-colored follicular eruption beginning on the center of face and progressing to involve his entire body. What's the diagnosis? The diagnosis of this case is trichodystrophy spinulosa, a condition caused by poliomavirus in uh, immunocompromised patients. Compare the name of the, two, of the two conditions. Trichostasis spinulosa, trichodystrophy spinulosa. Both of them has, both of them have spinulosa. Question 33. This fourth question is endotrix. The fungi here are we send the hair shaft. Endotrix. Endotrix. In ectotrix, the fungi are outside the hair shaft, that means cuticle destruction. Ectotrix. Endotrix. And the tricks. And here, compare endotrix, ectotrix, and piedra. Question 
Question 34. A board question. What is the causative agent for this hair loss? This figure suggests a spindle shaped macrocanidia indicating microsporum canis. In the next slide, a spindle shape versus cucumber shaped macrocanidia are present. The spindle shaped macrocanidia with thick wall has uh, here suggests microsporum canis, but here the cucumber macrocanidia with thin indicate microsporum gypsum. As you know, as a widely held view, both of them are ectotrix. In fact, all types of microsperm are ectotrix. And here you see the pectinate or comb like hypha that is a suggestive of microsperm advini. Microsperm advini. Question 35. What's the diagnosis? The clinical image shows a thick yellow crust. In college study, the, um, here we have the chandelier or antler-like shape. Taken together, Favus is suggested. Chandelier. Chandelier is a French term that is now coming used in English as a large decorative hanging light. Chandelier or antler like. For trichophyton showing line for Fabus. Question 36. Which type of fungi infection is more probable? This figure is indicative of trichophyton tonsurance. In trichophyton tonsurance and trichophyton rubrum. Trichophyton tonsurans and trichophyton rubrum both have pencil shaped macrocranidia. But in trichophyton tonsurans, we have balloon form, this variable size, but in trichophyton rubrum, we have teardrop like structure as macrocnidia. So the macrocnidia in both are, are pencil like shape, but the microcnidia in trichophyton tonsurans are variable size and balloon form, but in trichophyton rubrum is teardrop like structure. What's the diagnosis? You see here teardrop like microcnidia. So the, uh, the answer is tinea rubrum. Teardrop like or bird on wire. And question 38, what's the diagnosis? What you see here are pencil-like macrocnidia and variable-sized microcnidia. So the diagnosis is trichophyton tonsurance. Question 39, it's a bold question. What you see here are comma shaped bodies indicative of tinea. 
In the next slide, compare some aspects of tinea, in SQ, hair, and also trichoscopy. Comma shape here, comma shape here. Tinea of skin and McGregor granuloma. Question 40. What's diagnosis? The most striking feature here is asbestos-like scale on the skull. This is compatible with the diagnosis of pityriasis imiantatia. Pityriasis imiantatia. Pityriasis imiantatia is seen in psoriasis, atopic dermatitis, seborrheic dermatitis, and tinea of a scalp. The most common cause of this condition is psoriasis. Pityriasis imiantatia. Pityriasis imiantatia. That was the board question. Question 41. Lesion since birth, what's the what is the density of hair follicle in the affected area? This figure shows triangular patch of alopecia in the temporal area of a scalp. The diagnosis is compatible with temporal triangular alopecia, and trichoscopy terminal hairs are reduced compared to increased velous hairs. What's the diagnosis? Question 42. It's another question on triangular temporal alopecia that emphasizes on the dominancy of velous hairs than terminal hairs in histopathology. Interestingly, triangular temporal alopecia is more common on left side rather than the right, as you see here in this case. Question 43. Hairs were normal at birth, but then quickly are shed. What's the diagnosis? The figure display alopecia with generalized papulosis. History demonstrates normal hairs at, at birth, then are shed. The two findings are in favor of the diagnosis of atricia with papules. Atricia with papules. Question 44. Hairs were normal at birth, but then quickly are shed. What's the most probable electrolyte imbalance in this case? Atricia of these papules is mostly associated with vitamin D resistance rickets. So it's ex uh, expected in tests to have increased level of vitamin D and hypocalcemia. So the correct answer is free, hypocalcemia. So, atresia with papules may be associated with hypocalcemia and increased level of vitamin D. Question 45. What's the diagnosis? Clinical images here sh show uh, pl uh, pale, blonde, and unruly hair. Unlike microscopy, longitudinal depression is found, and on electron microscopy, longitudinal grooving here is seen. In conclusion, uncompatible hair is indicated. Question 46. A 35-year-old man presents with eyebrow involvement since infancy was the most probable association. What's obviously involved here are eyebrows, as erythematous papules with follicular plugging of eyebrow more in the lateral side of the eyebrow. The most probable diagnosis is ulritema uh, ophrogenes. Ulritema ophrogenes. That's a subtype of Kratosis pilaris atrophicans. Ulritema ophrogenes. 
Ulrithema ophrogenes may be associated with woolly hair. So the correct answer here is free, woolly hair. Ulrithema ophrogenes. In the next slide, three main types of Kratos' clarus atrophicans are shown. Ulrithema ophrogenes mainly affecting the eyebrow, atrophoderma vermiculatum mainly affecting the cheek, and KFSD, Kratosis follicularis spinulosa decalvans. Question 47. Lesion since childhood, physical examination, palmoplantar keratoderma, photophobia, what's the diagnosis? What you can see here is a scarring alopecia of a scalp in association with extensive and progressive keratosis pleuris. It's compatible with KFSD, keratosis follicularis spinulosa decalvans that involve a scalp, eyebrow, and eyelash in a scarring form of alopecia. Question 48. Which one is not compatible with alopecia areata? A. Dem demonstrates yellow dots. B. Shows clustered velus hairs. C shows black dots and D in the D we see tapering hairs all of them are the dermoscopic features of uh, alopecia areata yellow dot clustered velus hairs black dots and tapered hairs as exclamation sign Question 49. What pattern of alopecia area type consider here? This is obviously the ophiosis form of alopecia area type. Question 50. What's the diagnosis? The histopathological clue here is pigmented hair cast and empty anagen follicle due to, pull, due to pulling. So here you can uh, consider tricotillomania. And uh, you see it in the histopathology of tricotillomania, pigmented hair cast, distorted hair shaft, and uh, trichomalacia, distorted hair shaft as trichomalacia. Here you see a board question. The clinical clues here that are in favor of trichotillomania are large irregular geometric area of hair loss that's accessible with hairs of varying size and lengths. Question 51. What is the diagnosis? Alopecia areata, trichotillomania, traction alopecia. As you see here, the frontotemporal area is involved. The clue in the diagnosis here is a thin line of hair in anterior side of this patch that is preserved. The diagnosis is traction alopecia. So the correct answer is free. Question 52. According to this figure, which type of Norwood classification is indicated? Here I'll talk about some more important cases of Norwood classification of androgenic alopecia in men. As you know, this classification is of value in case selection of patients in hair transplantation. Here, the vertex is more involved, so the class 3 of Norwood is indicated. And here, according to this figure, which type of Norwood classification is indicated? 
Here the class 5, both vertex and anterior surface. Question 54. According to this figure, which type of Norwood classification? Here the temporal fringe here. Here the lateral side fringe, not temporal fringe, lateral side fringe here is preserved. So it's the class 6. And here. Hair loss is in an anterior to posterior direction with involvement of fringe. So it's the class 7 that the hair transplantation is with poor prognosis and is not advised. And here you see the Norwood classification. The most important cases for question are 7, 6, um, 3 here vertex slightly and here vertex dominantly involved. Question 56. Escalp lesion since 6 months ago. This was a board uh, question. What you see here is a prefollicular erythema and cast and scarring alopecia. Some orifices are absent here. And in histopathology, there is prefollicular infiltration at the level of infundibulum. So the diagnosis is lichen plano plaris. Lichen plano plaris. Lichen plano plaris is different from DLE by these findings. In DLE, the infiltration is both around the upper and lower part of hair follicle, but in lichen plano plaris, the, uh, the infiltration is mainly around the upper part. In addition, the interfollicular skin in DLE is involved but not in lichen plano pleris. Question 57. This is a variant of lichen plano pleris called frontal fibrosing alopecia. This was a board question, postmenopausal female with perifollicular papules of frontal areas since six months ago that resulted in frontal hairline recession and prefollicular papules. What's your diagnosis? Frontal fibrosing alopecia as a subtype of lichen plano pleris. And here, another question. A case referred to you with absence of hairs of both scalp and axilla. What's the diagnosis? This is also another variant of lichen plano pleris, as Graham Little syndrome composed of scarring alopecia of scalp and hair loss of both pubis and axilla, and kratosis pleris like follicular papules on the body. Question 59. These figures, other findings, porotic erythematous plaques of buttock and trunk, what's the diagnosis? The histopathology here shown mucin in follicle compatible with follicular mucinosis or alopecia mucinosa. Follicular eczema differs from follicular mucinosis with the absence of mucin.
And question 60. A patient with painful interconnecting inflammatory nodule and draining abscess. That is, the diagnosis is dissecting cellulitis of a scalp. Dissecting cellulitis of a scalp. Uh, in here, you see that dissecting cellulitis, cellulitis of a scalp mostly affecting black patients in the vertex and occiput. Question 61. COH gives a biopsy were negative for infection and atypia. What's the diagnosis? What you see here is a strile, pustules and crust. We send the photo damaged a scalp of a patient. The diagnosis is compatible with erosive pustular dermatosis. Question 62. What's the artery depicted here? post auricular artery. Question 63. Which one is compatible with dense connective tissue? As you see here, in the next slide, we have one skin, two dense connective tissue, three aponeurosis, four loose connective tissue, and five periostome. So the correct answer is to dense, connect, dense connective tissue is more close to the skin and loose connective tissue is more uh, close to the periostome. What is this flap? This is an O to Z flap, a subtop of rotation flap. You see here rotation flap that uh, commonly as O to Z on the scalp. Question 65. What's the flap? This is the pinwheel flap. Pinwheel flap. And what's the flap? This is rhomboid flap. And what's the flap? Don't mistake, it's not O to Z flap. It's V to Y flap. Compare here O to Z flap on a scalp and V to Y flap here. Question 68. Which one is superficial temporal artery? Based on the location of ear, in the anterior is superficial artery. In the anterior is superficial artery superficial temporal artery and in the posterior is posterior auricular artery. So the correct answer is free. Anterior superficial artery in the anterior side of the ear and posterior auricular artery in the posterior side of the ear. Question 69. Which one is zygomatic temporal nerve? As you see here, supratrochlear, supraorbital, and zygomatic temporal nerve and artery are homologous, are the same name. But from the ear to the occiput, the name of arteries and nerves are not the same. Greater occ uh, occipital nerve, lesser occipital nerve, occipital artery, posterior auricular artery.
So the zygomatic temporal nerve is compatible with free. And question 70. What are the two main reasons of this side effect after her transplant? The, uh, the last question. This is the necrosis mainly due to either overdose of epinephrine or trauma. Trauma is itself mainly due to overgrafting or placing the grafts too deep in the tissue. I hope you enjoyed this video. In the next videos, I'll continue the dermatological cases.